The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 27, NASDAQ off 45, S&P's down 4.5, gold contract up $2, trading at $12.83 an ounce. You get silver up $0.02, cents, $14.85 cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up $0.49, cents, $63.98 a barrel. Notes and bonds, 10-year note up 5 ticks, 123.19, 30-year bond up 12 147.11, King Dollar. King Dollar down 316 ticks, 97.265. Now, this is the first day, folks, uh, that we actually have King Dollar lower with volume. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if, in fact, uh, you're going to get a, a real pullback in the dollar here. Euro. Euro is at 112 to 1 U.S. dollar. Yen's at 111 and a quarter. And the British pound is at 130 to 1 U.S. dollar. They're taking Google's uh, Google out to the cleanest here. They sure are, man. Oh, down over $100, right? That's, yeah. that's quite a little haircut. Uh, one more time. Get, yeah, we were just going over some of the numbers. Um, obviously, not good. And, you know, <laughs> not with it, what's amazing is that Google went and tested its high yesterday and just couldn't handle it. Uh, you know, bottom line, it's the second time. It, I mean, take a look at Google the last three years. Hit high once, big pullback. Hit another high, big pullback. Here we go. Totally. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks, at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as you do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, outstanding program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time right here at TFNN. If you want to understand options, option strategies, futures, great program. We are in the middle of a monster week out here. Uh, check it out right 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And if you happen to be driving down the beautiful West Coast of the United States right now, remember, you can just go, go to TFNN right at YouTube. And, and check us out. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Now, guys, six months ago, did you ever think you'd be saying in one day, short Google and long GE is finally starting to work? Did you ever think no. in that position, that's, that's the headline that, that we'd be using today? No. This is an earnings season. A, you know, welcome to earnings season, guys. This is why this time of the year is like my Christmas, Every, I, you know, four times a year. And, I just love this stuff. And you have a real Christmas this time. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's amazing. But I'll tell you what, you know, when you look at Google, if you're a real honest investor looking at a stock like Google, you know, the, some of their revenues have started to taper off, kind of a law of big numbers, but this is still a massive company making massive amounts of money and massive earnings per share. So I don't know if I'm ready to throw Google out just yet. So this is exactly what Tommy just said. One stat, right. and we'll pull it up, but I remember the stat because it was staggering. The, right. the clicks on their ads year on year grew 39%, which, and then it was like a worrisome stat because it was the, right. the lowest growth since 2016. Clicks on their ads, now they're paying less. They're getting paid less per click. Right. But it's remarkable, year on year, you know, almost 40% more clicks on their ads, let alone what else is going on on the site. Um, so I hear you, Kevin. There's, there's, I mean, that's a big number, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and today's going to be an ugly day, and there'll be some analysts. Now, Stifle has already come out and called it a hold, but, you know, I look at these numbers, and if you eliminate the noise from analysts, this company is still massive, and they still make a lot of money. Oh, there's, 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 story. There's, there's no doubt. Now, Apple, we get Apple after the close here. We, yep. we, the NDX, we're going to get some action out here all day, man. Absolutely. Apple will be a great trader today and a great story going forward as we work through this because here's the thing, right? iPhone sales, we know they're starting to taper off, but Apple's got services. The services department, right? It's App Store, Apple Pay and Cloud Services. But here's the thing, Apple, their, the personality of that company, their identity has been so tied to the iPhone yes. that can investors be able to make that transition to see where Apple is really growing 
and that is in the services department away from the iPhone, you know, but I, I think it'll still come down to what's going on in China. Is China better, is China worse, or is, or is it stable? Yeah, and you know, what's going to get intriguing here is that they're saying that they're going to do some kind of a forward guidance as to how much how much stock they're going to buy back. That, okay. that, that can sure. be a big deal, man. Oh, I mean, people like you, getting rewarded with straight cash, right? Yeah, totally. Oh, I, they, you, yeah. know, you, you, you bring some of that stock off the marketplace, it's going to make a difference, man, because they're already printing money. Yes. You know, so that, I mean. Yeah, they, they, Apple doesn't have a revenue problem. You know, it, it'll be interesting because Tim, you know, remember in early January when Apple guided lower, part of that discussion was we're going to be buying a lot of stock at these levels. Right. Remember, and the stock got into the 140s and 150s. So yeah, you got to think that Apple has been quite active in terms of buying their own stock back. There's no doubt. Hey, what did you think? You know, those banks yesterday, man, took off. That was yeah. like. That's, to me, it came out of nowhere. It's like, okay, what, is the Fed going to come out and say something different? <laughs> you know, this uh, three day, right, Tom, this three-day rally in banks, and Oliver Rennick and I spoke about it uh, yesterday afternoon, it's been pretty impressive. Yeah. Why? Well, because two days ago, Tom, bonds were up, and yields were lower, and banks still rallied. So, you know, you can put a theory on it. Is it late cycle? The banks usually rally late cycle. I don't really buy into that because I don't know what the definition of the cycle is exactly. But the banks were beat up, and maybe a strengthening economy is going to eventually lead to higher yields in the 10-year or at least stable yields in the 10 year and so you know the banks yeah you're right tom the banks have had a three-day rally that is really impressive three to five percent across the board i know and you know this this anomaly and that's I, that's the way i felt exactly what you said kevin is that okay the banks are up the bonds are up the, yeah. do, the dollar was up it's like okay man that you know i mean if we were going to a fundamental textbook that isn't how it's supposed to work you know what i mean right. <laughs> Yeah, take your economic soul 101. I was telling yesterday, th these banks, you know, and, and the reaction to some of the data has been kind of a head scratcher. I'm getting a welt on the top of my head from scratching my head when yeah. I see some of this movement. Yeah. But, it, you know, you got you to gotta just, you know, it's like riding a wild tiger, Tom. I, I'd love to get off, but I have no idea how. You yeah, just got to well, keep you know, trading. And that's what's so great about options, though. I mean, that, that's yep. the reality. Definitely. Do you know what I mean? You have, you have defined risk. You can play it both ways. You can, you can just play it that, yeah, you're going to consolidation and go sideways, and you're still winning. I mean, you know, you're not going to win. If you time, watch our the... show, Tom, you saw the back spread that we put on in crude oil. Yes. Right? Yes. And crude oil went up. We adjusted. Crude oil went up. We adjusted our gamma. Crude oil went up again. We adjusted, adjusted, and then crude oil sold up hard, and, and we made, you know, five grand in a day trading the curvature right. of crude oil. And that's what you got to play for in these. You got to play for the big moves yeah. and play for the curvature and know how to understand how to defend a position like that. And you wait, you wait, you wait, and then you make your money in one big move. And you pounce. That's right. Right here, folks, 45 minutes from now, and just as Kevin walked you through it, folks, okay? You want to understand, you know, options are all about strategies. You want to understand strategies, tune in. Kevin, you're a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show in 45 minutes. Great talking to you guys. See you, you soon. Too. Thanks, Thanks so much, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, folks. Uh, Dow's down. Dow's down 26. Nasdaq's off 51. S&P's off five and a half. Let's go to John in Boston. What's going on, John? Hey, how are you doing, Tom? We're doing great, Morning, man. John. How you been? It's been a long time. Uh, hanging in there as always. Good that's, to hear from you. That's a beautiful thing. And you're getting a spring up in Walden's Pond right now. <laughs> right? Oh, that's still Walden a long Pond, way yeah. off. The uh, well, today the... it's damp, rainy, uh, 50 degrees. Oh my God! You know, it's well, a... that's typical uh, yeah. early spring in Boston. I listen. I had one of my friends last night text me right, and he texted me in his backyard a, a motorcycle, a, a boat, and a jet ski. And he says, Obi, I'm getting ready for, for summer. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah, it takes a couple more months. Uh, hey, listen. It's, it, it, in, in, in the month of April, we've had, I've already lost track of the, uh, the entire month of April, 30 day, uh, 20 days had some rain. Really? Man, wow. that's intense. Yeah, it's, well, uh, it's a record snow. breaker. Yeah, at least it wasn't snow, Tommy says. <laughs> it's a oh, well. silver lining in those, that, those rain is. clouds. What can you do? So, Newmont, right? Yeah, it's a bad one here. Uh, I'd like to do both the bear and the, well, I don't want to call it the bull case, but I, I'd like to move it out on a short cover uh, rally and a bounce. Uh, do you think it will head for 29 first? No. Uh, no. No, let's see. So... Your low is 28, your high is 39. Um, what you have here is that, you know, we, we came down the last two weeks. You get down from this 35 bucks. You, you're coming into, well, you want to see, a, well, this is pretty good, actually, 29.92. Let me see what it did yesterday. So we did 30.53 today. 15 million shares. Okay, so we're doing the test today of this June 50, uh, January 15th swing low. And it looks to me like you're going to get a rejection you're not going to uh -huh. get the volume, that's for sure, which is good. I mean, we did 15 million down there. You're at 1.1. That'll do about 7 million out here today. Let me see what they did yesterday. I think it was 13.55. 13. .55. 13. So it did 13. Okay. Um, you definitely want it underneath this. Yeah, it, will, it won't do 15. It'll do, it should do less than, than 13, too. Yeah. If I put this on a weekly. Yeah. This is this. It, 
This is still in a consolidation, John, so it's not the end of the world. No, um, no. Uh, the reason I got stuck in this, I mean, it, it you know, with all this, this merger stuff, it was doing court, somewhat right? decently, and then all the confusion, it hit 37 plus, and then it hit 36 plus, and I stuck it out. I, I missed, I put a limit order in at 38. Of course, I didn't get it. Uh, then they announced a special 88 cents a share dividend. Right. And I stuck for the, well, you know, that's enormous. Yep. So, a big deal. I collected the dividend, but then it didn't hold the 34, and it broke. But all its peers, the healthier peers, have all uh, taken a, a, quite a bath. No, they have. Uh, when you take a look, like when I take a look at the equity, the gold equity market right now, though, it looks to me like we're bottomed out. Um, and we'll find out... This is the first day, you know, if we go over to the dollar for a second, this is the first day that the dollar has any type of volume in it and we're going lower. You know, we've done 10,000 contracts. That's a lot of contract volume for quarter past 10.30 in the morning. It, it won't be a monster, but this, this thing will come in at 20,000, and we haven't done 20,000 contracts in a while. So that should be the situation that is saying that the Fed's still going to be really dovish tomorrow. And if that's the case, then, you know, gold still will go higher, and that the dollar, you know, we'll see whether it gives it up. I mean, it hasn't given it up yet. But yeah. the encouraging thing, John, is that even when the dollar was up, even when the gold contract was down, these gold equities didn't break swing lows. They can't, you know, the, the ugliest one was Hecla. If you want to just watch something, Hecla's going to be one to watch. The reason being, folks, is this. This was, this, you know, took, took quite a beating. And this is, you know, this is not no small stock. This, this, this equity here, you know, you trade a $2 stock, but the bottom line is that they're taking $152 million a quarter, you know. So it just has to do with their supply of silver coming out of the ground. It's too expensive. So if this equity here, you know, it got a bounce last Thursday. Um, if this can get inside this uh, 220, then it's saying, okay, the weakest stock is not going any lower. And that's encouraging for the whole business. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Then again, Heckler's been around since, like, 1898. No, they have. But that, that's why I think watching it is, is so cool, because it got smoked. And it's like, okay, man, this, this stock is in trouble. If that, just like you said, if a stock takes in $600 million, been around forever, real company, that's getting smoked, well, guess what? If that can come off the bottom... That is encouraging for the rest of them because that is the weakest gold equity, that I've, gold or silver equity that I've seen out there. You know. And so what are we looking at at Newmont on the on the quote unquote the bullish side or at least the dead cat bounce? How high? Well, no, I, I think I think you, you, you stay in the consolidation. The top of the consolidation is you know this uh, 36 to then that spike high 36 uh, 75. Okay. And if that's what you, what should happen here, John, is this. This should start moving quick, meaning all these gold equities and silver equities. And th I expect Newmont to move right along with it, you know. Okay, that's, that's yeah. encouraging. Well, I'm certainly not throwing it away into a bottom. No, no, no. Because if, if you bring this into a longer basis, uh, the bottom line is that, you know, you're still in this consolidation. And you, they give you, uh, not that it's much, but they give you a 1.8% dividend if you have to wait for uh, six months hey, or something. That's, that's about exactly. And we're, we're in a zero-rate environment, so... Definitely. <laughs> you know. Okay, can I ask you RFI here? This one is... I called you on this in, uh, in January, and uh, for some reason I missed it. I tried to fine-tune it and pick it up cheaper. Uh, you said to buy it at 11. Okay. Look at the move. This thing went to 13. Uh, let's round it off. Let's call it 1350. Okay, let's see. It's closed in management like a, company. It's like almost a multiple year high. Yeah, high total return placing. I have some contact, current income, capital appreciation. The fund invests 75% of its equity, equity related securities of real estate companies. Okay, so I see what it is. Okay, so, oh, this is cool. Okay, so. What you have here, this is a fund that American Tower is their biggest one. That's, that's, that's a cool company. That's, so American Tower, that's all the antennas you see all over the world. They, they rent them all. Then you get Prologix, which is a huge warehouse. Essex is a, just a property trust. Equinox, okay, so extra space. I see what we have, right? So... 
Yeah, it's a one-way trade here. Interesting. Well, okay. about uh, on a number of occasions, it had very sharp pullbacks. Recently, it went to I believe 12, it 70. was twelve seventy or twelve eighty. Yeah. Of course, that was tricky. I didn't know which way it would go, and then it it went to this, uh, uh, you know, uh, about thirteen fifty level. Yeah. So I am thinking, unless it's just too dangerous, although it has a monthly 8% dividend, which is fantastic. Wow. I mean, 8% for the year monthly dividend of $0.08. Cents. Uh, I, if, should it pull back to 1280 again? Uh, buy it. This thing looks to me like it wants to go to, let me see, 1330 You get like 3 bucks. Well, it's 1570 Yeah, at 12, in the 12 area, get it. This thing looks like it wants to go to 15 bucks, John, 1570 so try to pick it uh, up below 13. Yes, yes. Cooking, brother. Good okay, to hear from my you, friend. Man. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 67. You get the NASDAQ. Oh, uh, no. Dow's down 31. NASDAQ's down 67. S&Ps are off a uh, 6. What's putting that kind of emphasis in the NASDAQ? Yeah, right. Maybe so, uh, the Google of Googles. We bring this baby in here. So you get Google down 8.2%. Yeah. Um, you get Win off 3.5. Oh, what's going on in Macau? Western Digital down 103. Yeah, right. That's, and then you get, on the upside, you get... NXP semiconductor up seven and a half percent. 
Uh, Inside Corp up 4.5. Pfizer up 2.4. And Xilinx up 2.3. Xilinx has already got killed. Can we go into Win and see what's going on? Yeah, totally. Did they come up with earnings or something? Let's or take a look. downgrade so, or something's going on, right? So you're down five bucks. I see, I see their data earnings today. For, I saw 430, so they're probably out. Nope. No, I guess oh, not. Boston decision. Look at this. Oh. One is one of their uh, endorsement for two proxy firms proposed board changes at the gambling giant. Uh, burnishes its battered uh, corporate reputation ahead of a heavily anticipated regulatory decision. Yeah, so this comes, of course, Massachusetts. Yeah. I have many friends, as you do, still up there. So um, they have a Massachusetts Gaming Commission, and they, I believe, when you know all this stuff happened with Steve Wynn and corporate culture and board governance, right. they said, hold on a second, we've got to put this license on hold for a second and make sure that you know this huge casino that we just allowed to come in. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so... Um, the I just spend $5 billion and you don't have the license? Talk about, I know. But guess what? When you're running that type of show, and really what it spoke to, and we said before, zero corporate board governance. So that, I think, was the bigger worry, yeah. you know, in terms of just that individual case, that the board... Um, so uh, the Boston decision shaping up as a major issue, issue for Australian investors in James... James Packer's Crown Resorts. If the commission clears win, it could reopen a path for the company to resume the abruptly aborted talks over potential merger. Okay, oh, I remember when those yeah, came out as right, well. Right. Um, yeah, win's been under heavy scrutiny since January of last year of its handling of allegations having to do its founder. Um, this includes changes in management, the board, as well as large donations to charities, probably to make up for some of that goodwill. So let's see, the spokesman for the Massachusetts regulator, Elaine Driscoll, said Wednesday. the Wednesday. Said the commission's in the final stations, yeah. What, uh, sorry, I'm, I lost The commission is scheduled to meet on Wednesday. Okay. That's tomorrow, right? Yes, yeah. that is tomorrow. Uh, and check that out. So they plan to open in June. It's 3.7 billion, uh, excuse me, what is that, 2.7 billion? Why do they have 3.7 in parentheses, yeah, I wonder? I um, usually those are different currencies. Right. Uh, Encore Boston Harbor Casino, which will be forced to sell if the license is withdrawn. That is going to be a high-stakes regulatory meeting. Yeah, um, look at hundred million dollar fine. They're thinking they're shaking them down. Yeah, saying maybe <laughs> fine them, but don't kick them out. Yeah. Um, Send it over to my favorite charity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Um, so I wonder why it's down three and a half percent, though. Doesn't seem like that would have no, I, uh, yeah, exactly. any interesting, nonetheless. Let's let's see what else is there. Let's, well, let's actually LVS. Let's we'll be able to kind of tell. We're gonna and they do have their earnings though today. Or was that the 52-week oh, okay. high? I, th I think um, might have seen 52-week high or one of them. No date earnings. Yeah. After the close. Probably. Yeah. So the same after the close. So let's go take a look at Apple. So uh, Apple. Speaking of after the close. Yeah. All right. You get it. We have action out here. Man. I'm gonna jump around real quick, but the expected move on Apple. I pulled it up. We're in that analyze tab on the okay. TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform. Ooh, it's going up. It was about eight dollars and eighty cents when I pulled this up right after we talked to Kevin at 10:15. Five percent. So look at that. In the last 20 minutes, right? You've had, and it's climbing, man. We're at eight dollars and 78 cents. Was the expected move. Okay. And this has to do with positive or negative, right? right? It's kind of what it would, what the market's pricing in. If you wanted to get action on both sides, it's going to cost you where you better expect to get more than that move if you're going to make money on a volatility trade because right. you're paying that type of premium for that type of, you know, implied volatility, basically. Um, and it's remarkable that we've now gone 40 cents, which is 40 cents in both directions. So the market's opened up basically 80 cents extra movement in the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that moves throughout the day for that expected move. Um, um, as Apple comes out with those earnings after the close, yeah. Yeah, and so there, let's... And keep in mind as you go through it, 4.30. So if you're looking to trade yeah. the futures, you know, sometimes those NASDAQ futures, as yesterday, would have been a decent opportunity. Oh, yeah. With Google coming out right after the bell, Apple, 4.30. Those numbers are going to be dropped. Yeah, so it looks to me like I, I don't see Apple going higher. I don't see it going a lot lower. 197 looks like it's somewhere in here. You get, like, that's the last time with volume. That's 197 to 184. You know, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, it, it's had quite a comeback from the December lows, so, no doubt about that. Along with everything, right? For along, sure. Along with everything. Let's see what they're doing at Amazon, because when Google came out, Amazon was down 10 bucks. Okay. Down 19, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, not, that's nothing. No. Right? It's nothing. 1%, but it is yeah. nothing in the context of Apple right. being down, uh, excuse me, Google being down, that's, you know, 9% or whatever it is. Uh, Shot volume on the way back, too. So, uh, uh, GE. GE. I, you know, they, they're all yapping about GE, but the bottom line is look at this thing. I mean, like, 
the headlines of Google, they, it's a comeback story. It's like, really? <laughs> you, you I get, haven't dug into it too much you, to you get see a, you get the a, numbers get, You get a gap up to 1053. The last high up here was uh, 1129. So let's see what they are saying, though. Yeah, I mean, we are up, what is that, like 10, 12 percent in the last three days? Yeah. It's got to be. So let's see. GE jumped after revealing that it burned less cash uh, to start the year, which is a big deal, no oh, doubt. Especially for a company like this, right? Yes, which is exactly. Like, yeah. um, uh, boasting the chief executive's uh, effort to rejuvenate the ailing manufacturer, uh, GE's business, uh, industrial business went through $1.22 billion in cash the first quarter. The company said, as a report earnings and reaffirmed 2019 financial forecast that was better than Wall Street's expectation of a 2.9 billion burn. Well, that's, 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 that's a big I was hoping you pause there because that is like, whoa, yeah, that's, whoa. Yeah, that's 1.2. Yeah, 1.7 billion extra, yeah. right, in terms of, uh, and last year, I guess they came in at 1.7 billion they burned, so. Yeah, so that's, that's so, a start. Oh, definitely. That's a start. The, um, let's go see what else is. Can, can, oh, go ahead. No, oh, just go back. Or, I was just going to keep going with uh I just wanted to see what they, uh, that, no, we were down further, right? Yeah, just what it was driven by. So it was driven largely by timing as, and this is where I had heard some of the timing of things, as orders in the gas power and other businesses came in earlier than expected. Okay. So to be aware there that if uh, you're collecting some of your receivables, maybe earlier than you thought, yeah. well, guess what happens next quarter? When yeah, you that's might, what they want. That yeah, rel where, the relative strength will balance out over the course of the year. Yeah, because that was such an up. enormous beat. So that's probably and there's no it. change to 2019 expectations. Interesting. Yeah, so probably, that's where I wanted. They still yeah. haven't stopped messing with their numbers. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So, uh, yeah, and when you're pulling in that type of cash, it's going to go to the bottom line, too. Um, so they topped expectations for profit and sales, adjusted earnings, 14 cents a share compared with nine. Um, revenue fell falling. 1.8% to 27.3. They were looking for 27.1 billion. But again, that's only 1.2 billion difference there. And what, what was their cash burn difference? 1.7? Yeah. Right? right? So we'll see what happens next quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see what else we got out here. This is some of the higher volume equities out here today. Oh, look at that. Transocean's getting smoked. Down 73 cents. Eight bucks. Let's go look at this baby. I saw something about cash in their headline as well. Maybe not so on the good these, side like These G. guys in Diamond Offshore have got smoked, man. I mean, we don't need rigs outside. Look at this stock. It was $154 to eight bucks. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. I'm right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Uh, Dow. Dow right now is down uh, 29. Nasdaq's off uh, 67. S&Ps are off 5. And, uh, you know, Dow is uh, really just flat out here. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing a little divergence in the indices with earnings, right? As yeah. For sure. Big time. Yeah. So putting strength into it is uh, Chevron. Uh, Chevron's putting 24 positive points. You got Procter & Gamble putting 8. Visa's putting 7. You got uh, Pfizer putting 6. Taking away from it, Apple's min minus 23. Boeing minus 19. 3M minus 14. Now, if you go over to Chevron, what you have happening here, folks, is that uh, Buffett is behind the uh, $10 billion, giving $10 billion to Occidental. And so that's kind of canon uh, Chevron's bid for Anadarko. Yeah, which investors seem to like, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like it, the last thing you want is... is you're fighting someone with Buffett's money I'm bidding behind war you. with Warren Buffett yeah. backing a company? Right. No, right. for sure. And you're going to see, this is, this is one of his classics, folks. It, 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 we won't have this out here. Well, let's He see. loves preferred stock. It's where it's at, <laughs> He man. does. Preferred. How can you go wrong? And why not, right? Who doesn't and, love anything preferred? That's, that's the right. definition of preferred. You prefer it. Right. <laughs> it and what literally happens, is. And, I mean, and what happens with his, the way he normally does that, okay? Oh, here it is. It is it's out here. That, okay, he gets the shares... But then he makes them pay interest to him simultaneously, or dividends, they're yeah, going to call it. So he's got a preferred dividend of 8% a year. So he's making 8% on his money. He gets the stock. He gets both. Yeah. Yeah. So Warren Buffett, let's see, going to invest $10 billion in Oxy to help the oil producer in its $38 billion bid for Anadarko. That's pretty good. One, yeah. One, one, one investor is getting a quarter of it. Yeah, right? not bad. Not bad at all. And I wonder what his percentage of shares. So he's going to receive 100,000 shares. We'll jump over to a second. I wonder what percentage of the company that's right, because that's what, going to own. What all, that's right, because what also can happen with preferred is that one preferred share doesn't have to be one common stock share. Sure. And <laughs> yeah. I think it might be for voting purposes. It might be just because they haven't mentioned it outside of the dividends. But it's interesting that, you know, and just looking at uh, Occidental, I think they were like about $43 billion market cap. Okay. So in fairness, though, he's not buying 25% of the company no. for $10 billion, which right. you almost could right. in theory. Right. right. So he's taking like the different route there with give me 100,000 shares, maybe I'll invest that, but then you're going to pay me back. I, there's a lot of um, yeah. either way. He always seems to put together the best deals in the house, and it's always companies that might need a little bit of capital oh, yeah. at a time. And and you know, if you're gonna, on the flip side, right, if you're gonna come in and try and compete against a company like Chevron right. to buy an oil company or a nat energy yeah. company, you better have some some um, good fire ammunition power. behind yeah. you, right? Right. Um, because Chevron, I think, 220, 230 billion, and that's all the rhetoric gets talked about to say, hey, listen, I know you want to hire bid, but how are you gonna? develop all these resources that you're buying right. if you're only a 30 to 40 billion dollar company when you know it takes that much money so the their smaller size and financial resources make the offer riskier for anadarko shareholders uh that's what they're kind of leveraging here right. if you're an anadarko shareholder and um 
yeah, so we'll see what happens. So before the announcement came out, my opinion was that Chevron would have to increase their bid to be competitive. That's the CIO of somebody, which manages, um, mm -hmm. I think at this point we, you would consider Chevron's bid dead. As in, uh, he's quite a player to come into things. And if, because the one thing is that that adds credibility now to say, hey, Buffett's not going to let you buy these resources and then not fully develop them, right? right? So the capital now is there, which I think was the biggest worry right. for Occidental because Occidental's always been a higher value. Right. And you can imagine the Occidental as well as the Anadarko shareholders saying, okay, Buffett's in. I, I like the deal. Yeah. I mean, if they're wavering. Oh, no, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. And because right. it was, the only risk was, oh, man, can right. this company... Do they Perform. have the funding? Do they yeah. literally, the right. question was, are they big enough to develop all these assets the way they're going to be needed to? Well, that, an that, that question just got answered. No doubt. And Chevron say, ah, we'll take our billion dollar breakup fee. And, I and, know. and the investors say, now we don't have to worry about the risks of a big development. We'll just take our billion dollars. We'll move on and fight another day with another the numbers. Company. The numbers are amazing. Ten figures. It's like yeah, I had to do it in my head. Ten figures. To not do a deal. To not do a deal. One followed by nine zeros. Put it in the bank. It's a good negotiation. Man. Oof, That's yeah. a good negotiation. That guy should get a bonus. That woman, whatever. That, that yeah. person should get a bonus, whoever. Uh, and enough. I know it's probably not standard, right? But doesn't mean it's easy to put into those contracts. No. Yeah. No. 30-year bond. So a 30-year bond out here today, folks. It rejected lower price. Yesterday it came down with light volume. You know, these, these are setting up for tomorrow. Um, I, you know, I expect you're going to see higher price, lower yield, um, and there's, that's going to be really what, what's in the statement and in, uh, what is that, what is definitely happening is that, uh, every Fed meeting now has a news conference. Yes. They're live. Yeah. Every one of them. So there's going to be a lot of questions. There's going to be a lot of questions about, uh, all you've been hearing lately is that, yeah, the Fed has to change, this has to change, that has to change. It's gonna be, sure. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see. The, the play in yeah. between the uh, questions being asked and how Powell's uh, always answer. interesting, yeah. especially as uh, things fluctuate so much. It seems with oh. every meeting these days in the last six nine months, incredible fluctuations. There's so. no doubt. The euro. So the euro yeah. got back inside its range, folks, this morning. You know that uh, you know clawed its way back inside that 111.77. Uh, yeah. And you know this has been a weak dog, man. You know so. Let's go look at the It's really time. remarkable. You look at today's where 111.76 is the low. So we start literally a tick below uh, that 111.77. It's been mostly yeah. up, uh, upward action. Right. And, you know, that was what it seems that we've had here. What we have had. You had the dollar break topside, couldn't hold it. The euro broke downtown, couldn't hold it. Um, the yen, now they... Just before you go yeah. away, I just have to say, though, that, that, that channel, man, lower lows, lower highs, like, oh, it yeah. doesn't get much cleaner. Mm -hmm. And you could even go back here, you could even go back go here. I mean, way. that is a direct line downwards. So it it'll be interesting to see what happens as we're kind of right at now yeah. the top end of that, uh, no, that trend line. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Don't and even need to draw the line. Everyone sees it so clearly. Yeah. You know, I mean, seriously. You've been doing this too long. So well, no, uh, come on. That's just no, simple. That, that, no, that, no, 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 that's not how it works. That, that's is, simple. That's any Anybody who can see can draw a line at the top of those charts. Let's not overstate what, uh, no, well, no, no, that's, I, that's not the market, man. That's what I'm trying to say. It's so simple. You don't need to know anything about market to say, where is the trend line on that chart? I mean, I just want, that's, that's how simple. The, uh, the yen, you know, so we have Japan closed for a week. 10 days even. It's 10 days. Yeah. Yet. So it look, I don't expect much movement in the yen. You know, we're, we're going to be just bouncing around here because, you know, you're not, they're not going to need a lot of yen to be buying or selling, you know. So um, when that market wakes up, though, yeah. <laughs> Being, Can't imagine. Just try and imagine what would happen if the U.S. was shut down for 10 days. I mean, you better be in your seat ready for that reopen on the 11th day, man. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no I mean, doubt. that's a, yeah, it's just, it's, and, and there's good reason why it shouldn't be, because you need liquidity to know what a market at, you know, price oh, to, yeah. that, that there's a reason. It, well, because we're, we're so used to markets pricing every day, too. Well, it's because we're used to a functional market. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what, it, right. I mean, that's, it's, it's the reason why I'm joking. That's a scary notion, man, because, my goodness, Especially if there's some volatility over there's those some 10 bad days. Things yeah, yeah, or, right. or good, you know, as in something yeah, crazy. You can right. be on the other side of the trade. Yeah. You know, no doubt about that. Uh, Dow right now, uh, let's just, I'm just curious, percentage wise, 
Still look at this, nothing. Yeah, NASDAQ, yeah. but most NASDAQ of that down eight tenths of one percent. That's nothing. Not bad when you have right. Google down yeah. eight, eight or nine percent. Apple this afternoon, though. Oh man, it's uh, gonna be a double banger. Let's see where that expected move is as we keep watching. It's ticking up, man. Nine thirty-two. Like Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now is down 47. Nasdaq's up 72. S&P's up 6.5. Uh, what is going to be interesting is that uh, as they, uh, the premiums, they've almost up a buck since we started the program on Apple. Like 50 cents. Yeah. 780. So. I believe or 880, eight. excuse me. Well, let me just put, yeah. It's in, yeah, 880 it was to 9, 9, 940. Um, that expected move in both directions, yeah. Mike's getting a little more. Making you pay for that premium, man. Mike, you yeah. want to lock in defined risk to the upside and the downside? Give me a little bit more cash because we're getting a little bit nervous. Uh, and maybe it's just nervous. I mean, you can see if the market starts picking up to the downside and gets a huge acceleration, that could add to it because you don't want to be giving out your earnings as the market just gets, you know, hit with yeah. a big loss of a day. Um, yeah, so let's look. So we're sitting at like 201. Well, so it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, and so you can see how what this is doing is you, you'd buy the 
the call, you'd buy the put, yeah. right? You combine them, right. and that's where you're looking for because you want the put, you want the call, you want it right at the at price, yeah. kind of how we set them up on the right. Nadex platform. And so that's where that expected move comes from. And just ballpark, right? Now, if you did it at 200, but that's not going to quite work because you're at 201. 201. Yeah, right. um, but you can see at 200, there's your 200 on the bull side. Yeah. You're getting in at 570, you're getting in at 630, so that's costing you $12. Yeah. But guess what? You got a dollar of that that's value, and these are going until May 17th, which right. is why you got, instead of just going for the immediate today. short term. Right. right, which is pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool when you, you can see that, how clear that is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And let me even, uh, this is going to wrap up on us real quick, but I was going to pull up, uh, yeah, because see here are the May 3rds. Uh, and there's the 200, so there's a quicker one, 470 oh, by yeah. 570. There it is. Yeah. It's looking at 1040, and that's still through May 3rd, which is only a buck over what the expected move we're looking for right, right. now. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We get a fast market coming up next. Then, of course, we get our members to uh, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. We'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get them, folks.